Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? I can't believe it. We've reached, what is it, our 16th vlog. Now, over the past, we've covered a lot of different topics on the vlog. We've covered my health. We've covered uh, me doing burpees. We've covered our marriage. We've talked a little bit about technology that scares us. We've talked a lot about Farley's health, my dog. Uh, by the way, for all of those of you who have been inquiring about how Farley is doing, I am pleased to announce he is doing so much better. He had two surgeries in the last little while, uh, but he's back to his old self. He's a pain in the ass. And that makes us all really happy around the, around the McDotto household here. So we're super pleased and Farley is doing so well. And we thank you all so much for your wishes. It, it means a lot to me uh, for how many people have reached out and, and, and expressed concern and support. Today, I want to talk to you about a decision-making process that I'm going through. Uh, re relating to productivity. Now, of course, we do a lot of productivity videos here on the channel, so I'm always looking at different productivity tools, but I'm in the middle, kind of on the horns of a dilemma, where a tool that I think the world of, I am seriously considering removing from our toolkit. Uh, not from one that I recommend, because it's still a product that I recommend, but from the, how we actually produce all of our videos and our product here and how my team works, I'm looking at removing a tool which has been a very valuable addition and works really well, from the mix. And that might seem on the surface to be insane. And even as I hear myself say it, I think, are you sure this is a good idea, Steve? But let me tell you the backstory, why I'm thinking about it. And I think it's a lesson that might resonate with you. And the backstory is, it starts with something completely unrelated, moving houses. When we were moving our house, we moved here in December into this new, into this new house. When Shannon and I were preparing to sell the old house, we hired somebody to come in and a house stager, a professional that looks at your house and helps you set it up to make it more appealing to people coming in, uh, to make it more appealing to purchase. And she went through our house and she picked out a whole bunch of things. She said, this goes, this goes, this goes, this goes. And she pointed at a whole bunch of things and said, throw them away, give them away, store them, sell them. I don't care, but they can't be here. And Shannon and I were a little bit taken aback by this because all of the things that she pointed at weren't bad things. We kept a clean house. It was not cluttered by our stra any stretch of the imagination. At least we didn't think so. Uh, and everything that she thought that was pointing at was a good thing. It was a nice thing. It was, it was, it worked. It wasn't, you know, they were all good stuff. It was all good stuff and part of our life. But we trusted her, so we did it. And an amazing thing happened to me. I won't speak for anybody else, but I'll speak for me. It was like a weight was lifted off my shoulder. A burden was relieved from me. I, I, and I don't know why, because all of these things, as I say, were good things. They were all part of our life. They were all, they were all welcome in our lives, welcome in our home. But getting rid of them liberated me. And I felt lighter. I felt happier. I felt less stressed. And I started to realize what some people believe. That there's a lot of people who are minimalists who believe that the less you have, the happier you can be. Now, I don't expect you to believe me because frankly, I probably wouldn't believe you if you were telling me this story, but I believe me now. This, is a, this has become part of our life is Shan and I are looking at ways to simplify things and to be, to, we're not gonna be hardcore minimalists, but in our, in our dressing out the house that we're in now, we're kind of going through an accordion, an expansion and contraction. And anytime we get a room kind of set up with the things that we want, we go through and we take a bunch of stuff out. And we've made this accord between ourselves that we're going to really try and keep our house very sparse. It's hard to do in some cases. And I should point out once again, that the stuff that we're getting rid of is not bad stuff. It's not broken stuff. It's not garbage. It's not crap. No, it's just stuff that we don't need. So it's a, it's, a, it's a learning process, but we're going through it. What's that got to do with technology, Steve? All right, let me bring that full circle now. Let me bring that to today when I, within the decision-making process I'm doing on a piece of technology. So the piece of technology that I'm thinking about getting rid of is a wonderful communications tool called Slack. I endorse it. I think the world of it. It's been a tool that's been incredibly valuable to our team. And I've recommended to many of you, many of you use it and you like it. And I don't regret one word of the endorsement or the time that I've spent using Slack. It's a great, great product. But I'm questioning whether or not it's not now become one of those products that we don't need anymore and that we're using because we have an affinity for it, but not necessarily that it's adding the value that we need into our existence anymore. And the reason is 
Another tool that we use is Asana. Asana is a team task manager. Now the work process that we have as we do Dottotech is let's say we're creating a video, is I create the video as a task in Dottotech and everything around that video then lives within that task. All of the different assignments for people to do different pieces of work on, on any video that we work on is held within that document, within that task. And Asana has a conversation management tool built in. So if Liz has a question for me about a video that she's editing, she asks it there, which is the proper place. So now what I'm worried about is that when we implemented Slack in the first place as a communications tool, it was designed to stop us from communication and communicating in multiple platforms and streamlining all of our conversations. And it did a great job of doing that. But the capabilities of Asana have grown to the point that we're doing more and more conversation there because it makes sense to do it there, even though we could be doing it in Slack, but it's just, we're naturally gravitating towards this. So all of a sudden does this good tool now start to actually confuse our lives because now I'm going having to go into two places. I'm having to maintain conversations in two different environments and that concerns me. So I am thinking about minimizing and getting rid of Slack and just moving everything into Asana. Now I haven't told my team about this. Anybody that's watching on the team, sorry, we're going to be talking about it later this week. But that's the process that I'm going through and the decision-making process. And maybe you, as you look at the different tools you use, and if you find that you really want to improve your productivity, the solution may not be to get more tools or to get a better tool to do the job you're doing, but you may look at your tool mix and say, what can we get rid of and unburden ourselves from and see if that can't energize and make us more streamlined and make us more efficient. There's value in that conversation. So that leads me to decision-making process on the different tools, and especially when you're evaluating the tools that you've got, et cetera. So one of the things that we do, of course, here on Daughter Tech is we examine and we explore and we install and we try a lot of different tools so that we can explain to them, explain to you how you use them. Yet when it comes time for me to actually choose a tool to use, I go through the same, uh, the same anguish that each of you goes through in choosing any tool because it's a, choosing tools are big decisions and the larger your enterprise, uh, the more profound the impact is through the tool. So I, I'm not going to talk to you now about the decision-making process, but I'm going to talk to you about, about your intent as you do the decisions and dealing with FOMO or regret or an insidious evaluation cycle that seems to happen to many of us. So tell me if this is not possibly the case for you. You look at a variety of different tools the, uh, that are all available and they look very similar on the surface. You've heard good things about multiple ones from multiple friends who you've reached out to or multiple colleagues who you reached out to. So now you're reading through the spec sheets of all of them. You have too many choices, so you can't actually make a decision and you're terrified of making the wrong decision. So here's my recommendation and, uh, and a little piece of advice, uh, that I think helps get people over the hump. The recommendation is Get down to two or three tools that are the leading contenders in your space that your friends or your colleagues recommend most strongly, and you will intuitively know which ones. They'll resonate with you as you look at them. And just pick one. And I don't know how you pick one, but just pick one. And once you've picked that one, the others are dead to you. Don't worry about new versions of them. Don't worry about new capabilities. As soon as you've chosen a tool, you have a choice to make. And the choice is, I can turn this decision into the right decision, or I can worry about it for the rest of my life. When I had to choose a CRM for my, for my, for my, for Dotto Tech, I was down to the final two, which was Entreport and Infusionsoft. And I frankly couldn't tell which one was better. So I just chose one. I chose Infusionsoft. I just finally one day picked Infusionsoft and went with it. At that moment there, I then was at a crossroad where I could either make this the right decision or I could live in frustration for the rest of my life. When people ask me, what should they buy as a CRM? Oh, Steve, you use Infusionsoft, should I get that? Do you recommend that? I go, no, I don't recommend it. I don't know if it's any better. I know it does what we want it to do. It's, it, it's the right decision for me. Why is it the right decision for me? Because I made it the right decision for me. I trained on it, I installed it. I dove in as deep as I could and learned every nuance of the product and figured out how to apply it in my business and make it work for me. You can do the same thing. And if you do that, it doesn't matter what decision you made, whether or not the other product actually might be a little bit more capable. You will make your decision the right decision 
by engaging, by gaining ownership over that decision and, and making it the right decision. I don't look back with any regret, but because I put so much into it, it's going to work for us and it does work for us and it's the right decision for us. So as you go through this process, don't live in fear of making the wrong decision. Live in hope or, or live in the joy that when you make the right decision, you're going to make it the right decision because you know so much more about the entire space. I hope that makes sense. And I hope you found that to be enlightening. Uh, that's it. I'm going to kind of be a motivational productivity speaker in today's vlog. Now, listen, if you've enjoyed this content, please comment below, give us a like, share this, uh, sh share this video with others and make sure of course that you're subscribed to this channel. We're going to keep delivering our vlogs on weekends and we're going to be doing our regular videos through the week. Webinar Wednesday will be of course still running each and every week. So we're going to be producing lots of content here on Dotto Tech and the way to make sure that you don't miss anything awesome from us is to make sure you're subscribed and you've hit the notification bell. That's it. Till next time. Have fun storming the castle.